Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Chamber Exchange uh, with the Gowie County Chamber of Commerce. Uh, today we will hear from two guests from our membership, uh, but we just wanted to, before we get started, give a little shout out to some things that have happened locally. Uh, first of all, the University of Rio Grande men's soccer team won the national championship, uh, so that's a big deal. So we want to say congratulations. And uh, also, we just received word yesterday that Ohio Valley Home Health was uh, named one of the top 100 home health agencies nationwide. And we also want to congratulate uh, Megan Wise for being crowned for Miss Ohio. We think that's a great thing for our area and, of course, a great thing for Megan. I know she's been uh, working on it for many years. So, And also, uh, Gallup Police and Lights. If you have not taken a drive through Gallup Police at night, then, uh, you know, we suggest that you do that. Uh, it's just amazing what a small group of people can do. Uh, they've brought the community get together, the businesses together um, to just really, I guess, decorate is what I would think the downtown area for Gal Police. And I have already heard reports from across the river that you can see it from Route 2. So if you get a chance, drive through Gal Police at night. Uh, also, a um, couple things that the Chamber has really been focusing on. Well, one thing in particular is the Fair Labor St Standards Act. Uh, we have had two trainings on it. There are some changes that are going down or coming down the pike uh, that we are looking at very closely. So we've had two trainings uh, recently and uh, one was just on FLSA, the other was on changes that they are proposing that would affect exempt and non-exempt statuses. So we're going to keep a close eye on it and we'll be letting our members. So uh, that that's some of the uh, shout outs I guess we want to give right now. And uh, thank you for joining us for our December episode. Um, 2015 is drawing to a close, so we are very much looking forward to what uh, 2016 will bring. Uh, we've covered a lot of ground this last year. Um, annual dinner, business and tourism expo, legislative event, quarterly first Fridays, ribbon cuttings, business after hours events, river recreation festival, that's a big one. <laughs> yes. uh, we launched a new website this past year um, and for the first time in for 2015 we promoted Small Business Saturday and the Chamber actually created a sales uh, flyer that went out into 10,000 newspapers featuring local sales uh, for Small Business Saturday and we also had a scavenger hunt that was very successful. Um, so thank you to the businesses who participated and to those in the community who participated. We will be doing the scavenger hunt again next year. Um, people really seem to like it. I believe we gave away 15 prizes. Mm -hmm. There were 15, we 15 businesses. 15 different businesses that gave away gift cards and prizes uh, to participants. Um, with 2016 on the horizon, we will continue improving and expanding our member services at the Chamber. If 2015 is any indication of what's to come, I'd say we're in for another productive and busy year in 2016. Um, basically, we just want to say thank you to our member businesses and our community for your support and involvement and wish you all a very Merry Christmas. So uh, with that, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, turn over to our first guest. Debbie Saunders with uh, Dr. I always have to because I always call it Balsard Memorial Library so I always want to make sure that I get it it's the Dr. Samuel L. Balsard yes. Memorial Library so uh, but Debbie Saunders is the director of Balsard Memorial Library um, it's a service I'm sure a lot of us use so she's here today to talk about some different things with the library and I think first up uh, you were going to talk just overall the importance of having a library card correct yes Michelle Mainly what I always love to share with people is that uh, your library card is actually the smartest card in your wallet. Um, with it, you have access to not only books, uh, bestsellers, fiction, nonfiction, all of these type of items, but also uh, e-books, uh, our new Gale courses, which we'll talk about soon. Those are online college courses offered to you by Bossard Library. Um, but a lot of times people traditionally think of the library as being the place to go just if you had that school assignment. And even though uh, we are still uh, there as a resource for students, absolutely, um, it's also for the whole community as we serve as the community center of Gallia County. 
and we're very pleased to do that. So it's not just your traditional uh, what people might think of as a library. If you haven't been in there, the public library is so much more. We offer services of a, a myriad, uh, not just books, but also uh, programs, um, fax and copy service, uh, reference services, and uh, just so much more. So uh, let's talk about some of the current and upcoming library okay. program. We have a few uh, photos, I think, from past uh, events that you've yes. had. Yes. Uh, so uh, do you want to bring up a couple of the photos? Sure. And, um, and tell us a little bit about some of these photos. That sure. Well, pictured here is our recent Grandma Gatewood Comes Home to Gallia County event. And uh, this was held, as you can see, in our new Riverside room of the library. And this was a special event for our area because of just uh, Grandma Gatewood uh, was actually a local celebrity in her day, we know, um, because of uh, her hiking the Appalachian Trail and all she overcame in her life. So this was kind of a celebratory day uh, for our county. And this was the one act play, and you'll see the actress there who portrayed Grandma Gatewood. So, so was, this was a one act play yes, that it went was. on in. Mm -hmm. okay. And followed by the documentary, Michelle. So. Uh, very well received. We had about 175 people in attendance that day. Okay, great. Yes. And then, oh, this was a very fun event. This was our Breakfast with Snoopy. Um, actually, September was National Library Card Sign-Up Month. But I want to remind all of our listeners and viewers that every day is a good day to get your library card if you don't have one. Uh, but here is our Breakfast with Snoopy, and you can see Snoopy back there in the background, kind of to the left behind some of those balloons. And we invited families to come in and, uh, as a character breakfast. Um, we know that a lot of people in our community may not have the opportunity to go places such as Disney or uh, let's say Kings Island or places like that that might offer these character breakfasts. So we wanted to bring it to uh, Gallia County and host it at the library with none other than Snoopy, who was the honorary chair for National Library Card Sign-Up Month. Okay, so that's great. Oh, and here we have a visit from the Columbus Zoo, and you can see the crowd there and the stage there to the right that had uh, different animals uh, on the stage that were brought from Columbus there at the zoo. And we had crafts that day, a uh, face painting. Um, of course, you can always sign up for a library card. That's my plug today. <laughs> uh, but also, uh, you can see, again, the, uh, you know, the crowd that we had gathered that day. They were parked all over Gallipolis, and uh, that's what we want to see. Um, now, this next picture, uh, this was also held in our new Riverside Room here just this fall. Uh, this is our Spinosaurus Encounter, and this was brought to you, uh, the public uh, by the Carnegie Museum of Natural History out of Pittsburgh. Again, a wonderful institution that a lot of people in Gallia County would not have had the opportunity to maybe go visit because of maybe economically they could not, or maybe time constraints. Uh, we brought uh, part of that museum to Gallia County in bringing this life-size Spinosaurus, and the kids loved interacting, adults did too. It made for great photo ops. We also had replica fossils back in the back of this room so people could do some hands-on activities with that as well. And so uh, we always plug the literary element of that as well. So we have books on the different subjects of our programs to make sure that we always keep a focus on reading and learning. Uh, okay, here is when we had our summer reading kickoff just back past the summer of uh, June here in 2015. Uh, we had Batman. You can kind of see Batman to the left there behind one of those columns. And there's a picture of uh, Batman in the Batmobile. Uh, we also had Spider-Man um, at the library that day, also Batgirl. So this was a way for us to kick off our summer reading. And the theme was every hero has a story. And so we kicked it off with these superheroes that had a very positive message for uh, attendees. And uh, we also give students the opportunity to earn prizes all summer long for reading. And speaking of that, we're getting ready to kick off our adult winter reading program where uh, it readers can register for uh, our program and earn prizes all winter long um, as they read through the winter months since it's cold. So there's a lot obviously that goes on at yes, the library um, <laughs> it, and a lot of different programming like you said ranging from yes. kids to adults. The yes. Grandma Gatewood is a really interesting story. I would oh, definitely yes. uh, recommend yes. anybody look into that. Uh, when I first she was the first woman to hike the entire Appalachian yes. Trail, correct? Yes. yes, and she did it multiple times and um, when she was up in years and she also overcame a difficult home environment um, 
in her, you know, her past life, so she just didn't give up. She's a true testament to the strong-willed woman from our area. So, so what do you feel the library's role is in well, Gallia County? Well, uh, Michelle, um, you know, as the community center of Gallia County, and that's what we strive to be through programs, through the services we provide, uh, through meeting room space. Um, the, these programs I'm describing, just it's kind of the one-stop shop for all of those community needs. So again, we just like to refer ourselves as the community center of Gallia County. Uh, and then one of the thing, the newer things that's been within the last year are the Gale courses, correct? Yes, yes. and I know the Chamber has helped us a great deal with um, promoting those. And if you're not familiar with those, with your library card, uh, you can log on through our website and actually take online college courses led by, of course, college instructors, free with your library card. And this, these six weeks course, um, there's a myriad, hundreds of different subjects you can take. Um, sign language, Microsoft Office, um, digital photography, uh, they just, I could go on and on about all the things that you can take through these Gale courses. And so uh, all you need is your library card. And if you don't have one, we encourage you to come in and sign up for one because you really are missing out on all these wonderful programs if you don't have a library card, um, these services that you can access online. Well, and I can say we've uh, both checked out the Gale courses online, and it's really neat. I mean, there, there are a wide range of courses on there, um, yes. and they start every month, correct? Yeah, yeah. and we have, and, a, yes, Michelle. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we have a local institution who also is using this for some of their employee training. So I know that would be of interest to the chamber as well because you help all of our area businesses. So for employers out there listening, it would be a great way to do some college level training. Uh, and all the participants have to have is their Vossler library card. Well, uh, we have a few more minutes left, so okay. I was going to check to see if you wanted to talk about any upcoming events sure. or the ebooks, uh, anything okay. else that you would like okay. to talk about. Sure. Uh, also, with your library card through our website, you can access the Ohio Digital Library. And the Ohio Digital Library gives you access to free downloadable ebooks. Um, periodicals or we'll say magazines, um, all different popular magazines, and also videos. And so uh, again, all you need is your library card to be able to use this service. Uh, the other thing I wanted to kind of plug before my time's up here today is our upcoming programs. And many of you have probably seen in the stores or in um, the artistic guilds and things like that is the rise of adult coloring. So these intricate coloring designs that you can do. So on January 9th, we have our adult coloring event. Uh, we've titled that Color Me Happy. And it'll be January 9th at 9 o'clock at the library for adults only. And you'll be able to come in and uh, participate in this coloring and um, fellowship with other people, make new friends. We'll have refreshments. You can enjoy light music. It'll just be a good time, uh, a good social time to relax relax to kind of get away from it all. Uh, we also, um, Michelle mentioned um, how proud we are of Megan Wise as our Miss Ohio USA from Gallia County. We will have her as our special guest on January 10th as we have our winter's tea uh, with Queen uh, Megan Wise. And so she'll be reading um, to the crowd. But it'll be a nice tea that day. So all ages are invited. It'd be a good opportunity for our youth of our community to see someone that's excelled at this level. And we're looking forward to later in the year our Newport Aquarium visit. Again, that's part of our mission to bring things to Gallia County that others may not have the chance to travel and go see. We want to bring that home to Gallia County. And also, uh, Ohio Chautauqua returns in the summer of 2016. So we're very excited about that and we're already working on that event as the library is a big partner in that special week in Gallia County. Thank you very much. And thank yes. you for everything that you do for the community. I know you all are always busy trying to mm -hmm. find different things to bring to Gallia County that maybe people aren't able to see. So thank yes. you. Thank you. Uh, next up, uh, we have uh, Shana Chapman. And she is the owner. She's the owner of uh, Shana Co. She's also the recipient of the CPA Practice Advisor Magazine. Um, as one of the most powerful women in accounting for 2015, correct? And uh, we uh, are happy to have her here. She's going to talk about a, a, a lot of different things, ranging from her business to the award uh, to uh, some different community activities. Like many small business owners, she is involved in a lot of the activities. Welcome. Hi, we're happy to have you well, here. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. This is um, this is uh, just a flattering opportunity to come out here and talk to you guys today. Well, we, well, we appreciate it. it. Yes. <laughs> so maybe you could just open up with telling us and our viewers and listeners a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, so I'm Shana Chapman. 
I am a CPA in Gallup Police, Ohio. I uh, have a CPA firm and I'm also what is known as a certified information technology professional and a chartered global management accountant. And so what that means is that beyond just being a CPA or in the um, traditional roles of accounting, I also participate in, um, in doing uh, I also participate in helping businesses with their technology and, and, and setting that kind of thing up and understanding infrastructure within their businesses. Um, and on the global front, uh, with the Charter Global Management Accountant designation, um, I have a background in Japanese studies. It was my minor concentration, spent time at school in Japan and Tokyo. And so I came out doing a lot of Japanese manufacturing uh, clients. And so that gives the knowledge of how the world works as a whole, which is really important these days because nothing really, no business is really just where its geographical location is anymore. So it's important to understand what's going on globally as well as in your own location. So with your practice having such a far reach uh, nationally and globally, tell us a little bit about your home base in Gallia County. We know that uh, the, the face is behind the scenes. Sure. Um, I have anywhere between three and five staff. As you know, as being a CPA, we go through a tax season. And during tax season, we um, increase our staff to help us do individual income tax returns and uh, anything that's generally done during that time period between January and April 15th. Uh, because as you can imagine, that's when everything kind of runs in all at one time. So, so I have uh, Lorena Pishner, who's been with me now for since 2002, so what's that, 13 years. And Lee Knox, who um, is my administrative assistant and also my payroll tax guru. And she's been with us for over five years now. And both of them long-term employees, very, very knowledgeable. And I sometimes have to run to them to ask questions because they're at the point now where, where I, don't, I can't know everything, so I have to depend on my staff. And that's why I hire them because they're good and I really appreciate having them around. So what we do in our office at Shane Co. is we do everything from individual income tax returns and to business tax returns. And our general client is a small business client. So it'll be somebody who owns their own business, generally a sole proprietor, maybe a corporation with a few uh, shareholders, uh, a partnership, et cetera. And then we help structure those business. We can take that from anything from uh, the setup, the entity setup, what do you want to be? Do you want to be a partnership? Okay. And as corporation, should you be a sole proprietorship? And sometimes we have to consult attorneys, our local attorneys, all of which are very good. Um, we have relationships with them, so sometimes we'll have to work with them and say, um, what do you think, given the legal liability of this company, their entity structure should be? And then how do we look at that from a tax perspective and what they should do? Uh, to set up the entity. And then we t after we get them all set up, we can take them through the steps of uh, how to operate their, uh, operate their companies, from taxes to technology, all of it. Um, and there's so much to be done when you own a company. So you basically take them from an idea to, and get them set up tech from, yeah. the, from the beginning and so that when they go to file their taxes, they're under the right. <laughs> Yeah, is that kind of that, okay. that's right. I call it cradle to the grave. Okay, we can, we can take your business and we can set you up from the very beginning, and then we can shut you down at the end. Okay. Or even better, perhaps a succession planning. Right, so we can take you from the stage when you started and take you all the way till it's time to sell that business to somebody Great. else and then help facilitate that, that purchase or whether it's a sell of assets or the sell of the actual business. Do you find very many business owners go into business thinking that way or is that kind of a new, uh, I, I don't know that how many people say, okay, I'm gonna start a business and I'm gonna think that far ahead. What's the importance of doing that from even an accounting point? I think generally in a small town here, people are thinking about their children already. It's mm -hmm. I'm gonna open up a small family business of some sort and then hopefully one day my child will take over it because we live in such a small area and, and that's what happens a lot of times but all of a sudden sometimes will come this point where um, 
you know, your son or daughter went off to college and they decided that they liked it there right. and they don't come back. And so then you start thinking about, okay, they're not going to go into the family business. What do we do then? And so we have to have a conversation about um, structuring either a sell, finding a buyer, whether the buyer is local or from out of town and, and maybe can come back or what we do. So okay. it's kind of interesting. It depends on it depends on the, the people that are setting it up. I'll tell you one thing that nobody thinks about, though, when they're setting up a business. People don't get into business to do accounting. They get into business to do what it is that they like to do, right. but they find that there's a lot of accounting and compliance and tax issues that they have to deal with, and then that's when we come in handy. Okay. So there's there's all kinds of things, and, and some of the people I most admire are small business people because they have to deal with all kinds of issues on the way to, to having their own business to do what they love. Now, with your level of expertise in the technology realm, how do you find ways to apply that here in Gallia County to maybe some of your old school clients yeah. who are less technologically savvy? How do you kind of work that in for them? You know, they really, I think a lot, that's, that's probably the hardest thing to do is to take some older clients and get them up to date on technology. And really, even the taxing authorities, the state, the federal government is pushing that direction uh, for electronic filing of tax payments. Some companies, that's all they can do is electronic filing of tax payments, so they have to uh, figure out how to use that, the Ohio Business Gateway. So there are things where they never thought they would have to use technology, and they do. And so it's kind of a push on our end for some of those older clients. On the other hand, we have younger clients coming into town saying, hey, I'm ready to open my own business. This is what my love is. This is what my craft is. This is what I want to do. I'm a millennial and I want to utilize technology to get done what I want to do and so I don't have to be in any certain area when I do it I'm mobile and that's all that's a whole new exciting world and that's one that I'm really into and pushing on a national level what we can do to service those kind of clients and then and then keep keep going with our older clients too because I don't want to leave them behind it's very important to to take care of them as well so we want to touch on the award that you've uh, recently won and then we also want to bring it back around to your local involvement because I know you're doing a lot on a national scale but also yeah. on a local scale so if we could bring up there she is yes, tell us about award. your award congratulations <laughs> yes congratulations thank you, thank you. I'm, um, it always embarrasses me a little bit but um, <laughs> it is it's the most powerful women in the accounting profession it's the 2015 award it is actually the second year that I've received it there's 27 women across um, the United States and that stage of women are just, it's a phenomenal stage. Um, there is Jennifer Warwa, who's the second from the left there. She is the global vice president for SAGE, which most of you may know, Peachtree Accounting, which is a QuickBooks rival. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the chamber uses that. It's a phenomenal software. And the lady up there, Jennifer, she does nothing but travel the globe and, and facilitate conversation on stage. And she's just, she's a real go-getter. She's amazing. It's great to be on stage. You have the head of the California Society of CPAs, the head of the New York Society of CPAs. You have some technology starters um, and some accountants and bookkeepers. Those aren't all CPAs. Those are everything from vendors to CPAs to bookkeepers, consultants, and heads of societies. And those women are just making amazing strides. You were asking me about technology. One of the reasons I have that award is that I really push a change in technology to have a better work-life balance. That's very important to me, work-life balance. I, I have a child. I want to be there when my child has plays. I want to be able to take my child on vacation, but I have my very own business. And it's very complicated to run your own business and have a life. And so uh, I'm pushing, I really advocate for cloud technology and how that can operate your business and make your life, your work-life balance better for you. You become a better family member, you become a better worker, and how in bigger forms we can institute that for our employees so that they have those same things, a better work-life balance. and we believe, those of us that are pushing this, we believe that then they become better employees for you. Do you find it hard for people to get comfortable with using the cloud-based um, technology? Is that What do you think the biggest hurdle is when you go out and talk to some of the businesses, not maybe the, you know, the millennials coming up, the people who are used to technology? Well, I can say being from where we are, there's definitely internet whether you have internet access or don't have internet right. access that's that's, that's our biggest thing here right but once you get past that it's all about security so how 
how is my information information secure? We all heard about you know the target, you know, being the credit cards at Target being targeted, <laughs> for lack of a better word, um, and those kind of things. So older clients are a lot more worried about the security, okay. and there are things to be worried about. You you should make sure that you're secure. We no longer send tax returns through emails. We use secure web portals. We use um, we communicate with clients. We may communicate via email in other ways, but anything that's really important we can send through secure email or secure portals and uh, generally once we start talking about that it, it brings down the anxiety level. Good. Now tell us a little bit about your local involvement. You've got uh, many many pots burning on that <laughs> stove so tell us a little bit about what you've got going on. <laughs> so I am. I'm involved in a lot of nonprofit activity. This here, this is the Gallup Police Junior Women's Club Blind Raffle. We raised over $3,600 for our community, most of which over $2,500 goes to um, Holzer Foundation to buy rocking chairs for the maternity and family unit. Uh, the remainder goes to buy uh, clothes and, and gifts and stuff for children for for Christmas, um, which is a project that the Junior Women's Club does every year as well. We also, um, well, the Junior Women's Club is just a phenomenal organization I'm proud to be a part of. This is the Downtown Revitalization Project, formerly the um, Digital River Project. And what we do is help facilitate economic um, growth in, in a certain area of downtown Gallup Police. But the idea behind designating that area is that then that growth, if you can make a change on a block or two or three blocks, then hopefully that expands. And, and then you have a change in the entire county eventually. But you have to make a noticeable change in one area for all of it to happen. And so the Downtown Revitalization Project, we've really worked to bring in businesses and we've got quite a few. Yeah, there is a lot going on in downtown right now, um, and a lot of it is with the help of DRP. I mean, you all have done a lot from grant funding to help with equipment to getting a business in. So I just want to say I think uh, DRP is a great organization, and it's all volunteer, correct? It is all volunteer, and the people on the board, there's an amazing, each person on that board has a specific skill set that allows that board to to achieve their purposes. And the grant funding and the help is, is made possible through the biz, local businesses. Local businesses, correct? many of which are chamber businesses. Our, right. our local chamber population is just fantastic for our community. Well, we uh, thank you very much for coming. We appreciate it. We'd like to have you back on again at some point, maybe to go in a little bit more detail about some of this, uh, especially the technology and what you all do. Um, I think it's it's interesting. A lot of times people think of, you know, businesses doing one thing and yeah. they, and, and it sounds like you do so much more than that. So thank you very much. And we also want to thank um, Debbie for stopping and talking to us about uh, the library. Uh, thank you for joining us for another episode of the Chamber Exchange. I'm Michelle Miller. And I'm Jennifer Walker. We encourage you to visit our website at www.galliacounty.org to find out what is going on with the Chamber. And, you know, check out our members. Stop and say thank you if you see their name attached to something. Our local businesses are very supportive of the community. And we'll see you next month. Thank you very much. Thank you.